Hello, Auntie Jifu, alongside Janice Leamon Creaky. Yes, did I get it right? Hey! Very good. Uh, this is my co host as well as uh, the deputy PRO of the PEP. Uh, once again, everyone, thank you for joining us uh, tonight. And um, we have lots and lots to talk about. Uh, once again, welcome to the front line. Um, Janice? Yes, good night, everybody. Our topic for tonight is our nation is in crisis. We are going to be talking about issues that have come up in the, uh, the media space, uh, whereby we are going to be looking at it and hopefully we are going to be able to also get some comments from you as well. Because we want to keep reminding you that this is your party. This is where you have a voice. This is where you can come forward and say, this is my opinion, and we have to listen and take your opinions into consideration when decisions are being made. That is what being a democracy is all about. Correct, correct. I agree 110%. And uh, again, <coughs> the major role of uh, uh, the PRO body is, is basically to get information out to the public uh, for you to know exactly what is going on. And like Jana said, um, you know, you need to be in the know uh, as far as every step that's being taken, as as well as uh, you approving us in taking certain steps. So um, again, uh, democracy is what we're really striving for. We we are looking for a betterment for Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Janice and myself, we're not of the political cloth, uh, mm -hmm. but yet we've found ourselves uh, in this realm uh, somewhere that we we are not thrilled to be. Uh, the only uh, reason you know we have that drive is because we're looking for betterment, uh, not just for ourselves, but for everyone around us. Um, because I always think to myself, um, we always try as a society to hold other people down. Um, I just think to myself, why do we do that? We should try to empower everyone around us because if someone can't do for themselves, how can they possibly do for you? Um, so that's just food for thought for now. <laughs> so um, Janice, we have uh, our nation in crisis. Yes. Um, this, this is a... a Again, this is a, an ongoing issue that we've been dealing with, um, and we are in major, major crisis right now. Um, and one of the things we want to talk about tonight is this whole issue with the prison officers, mm. and they're requesting to be armed because of what's going on. Now, the uh, Mr. Al Rock, the Attorney General, has said, and he's made it very clear that he is not in favor of issuing guns to all off-duty prison officers. He has reiterated that over and over again. But yet, in the meeting that he had uh, this week, I believe, um, where he had a meeting and with the Association for Prison Officers, and you know they, they, they came out saying, oh, well, here's his, here's um, an alternative for you all. We're going to approve those applications made by prison officers. We will approve those. But does that make sense? The underlying issue in the prisons is the criminal empires that have blossomed in prison. Big business. Now, do not tell me that this is the first time, or if this, the bulb just went off in their heads, that we have a budding criminal empire in prisons. Something is not right. Then they say, well, you know, how are the, the, the uh, phones getting into the prisons? Um, they have been monitoring text messages, phone calls, and it's like, who is responsible? So instead of giving guns to prison officers, in my opinion, I think they need to deal with the issue of the crime that has flourished in the prisons, as well as deal with the prisons, prison officers who are perpetrating the crime that is growing inside Correct. of the cells. Correct. I, I agree with that 110%. Um, and again, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you know, I was in shock when I did... The, uh, uh, Mr. Alwari uh, talking on, on television, um, acting, uh, to me it seemed as if it, you know, it was news to him, like, you know, hey, we have something happening in the prisons and, 
I mean, I, I just, it's 55 years, Trinidad and Tobago, 55 years we're doing this. It's, it's not to say that, you know, we just jumped into this. Uh, uh, by now, we are supposed to know mm -hmm. how to get it right. Correct. You know what I mean? We know what the problems are that we're facing across the board within society, within the public, private sector, in, in every realm, in every corner of our nation. And yet, um, you know, the people who we have there that we've voted in, in, into office to, to, again, bring betterment, seems to not have an idea as to what to do and it's not until uh, people are now becoming aware and having their voices heard and, and bringing the issues out in the public domain is when they now want to come onto to the media platform and, and talk all this uh, so, you know, as if they, they actually know what they're doing. But I, I, I just think that if they didn't know what they were doing, we would have a fixed country already. And uh, that is not the case, unfortunately. I think, too, that the prison officers knew who are the other prison officers who are perpetrating this crime. They know who they are. Do they have a whistleblower policy for prison officers, by chance? I, I really don't know. I can't say. Yeah? If, I, if I answer that, I would be lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because if we have the whistleblower for corporations, why is it then that the same whistleblower concept can be applied to prison officers? Because if you know that something is, someone is supplying the cell phones and the various bits and pieces, well, the, um, I think because last time they actually had a gun. Yeah. The, yes, when they had the attempted uh, jailbreak, they had a gun. Was it a gun or grenade or something? No, it was a, I think it was like a gun or something. Oh. It was a gun. Anyway, <laughs> how did that get, in, get into the cell with the gentleman who tried to escape? Now, it is so interesting that, as Anthony says, 55 years, even whether it's UNC, whether it's PNM, they all knew what the pro or they all know what the problem is. So why cannot they solve the problem? This is a country where we react to situations. We yes. don't seem to be able to plan. Correct. You know, or you know, make a stance and say, okay, we recognize this, let us do something to clean it up. But no, it's allowed to flourish and then all of a sudden prison officers are losing their lives and then everybody's creating a concern and everybody and what I found really um, amusing was the fact that the prison officers took a letter to the Canadian High Commission requesting um, to asylum because they are not safe in their own country. Now, Imagine that. But imagine that. <laughs> that's the steps that has to be taken. That's where people have to go. I, I, I mean, Trinidad and Tobago, are we really realizing what is happening around us? <clears throat> I mean, do you look at your everyday lives and... and see the things that are actually out of place that you know to yourself deep down inside that mm -hmm. it just should not be this way. Right. I, I mean, uh, how long are we planning to, to actually stay uh, quiet? Why aren't we having our voices heard? I mean, in a major way. And I'll tell you, personally, I, I, I have been um, a little shocked and hurt as a Trinidadian, simply because I just thought when Mr. Imbert had uh, uh, spoke about the budget, I mean, really and truly, uh, this last time around, I think this definitely hurt a lot of people within the, the, the population. And, um, you know, for 1.3 million of us not to be in front of that parliament, I was there at the parliament on the Friday uh, when the call was made for everyone to come down to the parliament and, and let Mr. Embert know that we do not approve of this, this, mm -hmm. this budget. And yet, we did not have the numbers, and like a guy that was there said, Trinidadians like it so, and, and I don't want to believe that. I, I, excuse me, I, I honestly don't want to believe Trinidadians like it so. Um, I, I do believe we, we do want better for ourselves. Why we choose not to, to make a major issue out of it or, or bring real change from that starting point of ourselves, <coughs> Example, 1.3 million of us going down to the parliament. When are we going to do that? That's the question in my mind. What's the catalyst? That's, that, that, are, we, are we supposed to have our society fall apart even further for the population at large to, to actually become on the same page? 
You know what I mean? You know, I, I, I agree with you. And I think to the people need to understand <coughs> that they have given away their power. We have the power to make change in Trinidad and Tobago. That's right. And if we do not have that mindset to change what we can change, then we're just going to continue with whatever we vote for. That's right. You know, um, I was at a conference today and I met, there was a woman who did um, a session on taking back your power. And uh, she talked about the fact that she left Trinidad and went all the way down to the Sudan to work with about 901 women to build uh, a business. And they had a true vision of what they wanted. And uh, when she arrived, she walked with her projector, her screen, and uh, when she was when she arrived at the place, there was just a, this space and all these women waiting for her. And she says, "Well, uh, where am I going to set up?" And they said, "Well, we have no current, we have no electricity." And she goes, "Well, when is the electricity coming back?" He said, "Well, we don't have electricity." So she had to, at that point learn how to do her presentations without electricity. And then she talked about the fact that they were looking for, for, for funding. Um, and all, they went to about 46 banks and were turned down 46 times. And the last time that they got, they approached the bank, she said the leader of the woman um, disappeared for a few days. And when she came back, she asked the woman, well, where were you? I mean, you, you were missing in action. And the woman said, well, I went into the bush. She said, you went into the bush? She said, yes. And the woman said, where is Norway? So she said, well, Norway is a country that, you know, on the other side. And she said, um, we can go to Norway and we will get our funding. And they got the funding, 12.5 million US dollars. So the moral of the story is, when the woman felt that everything was um, not going to happen in terms of the funding, she went into her quiet space and found the answers. The answers came to her and she, they acted on that. The other point I want to make is, when she first arrived, that same woman turned to her and said, who are you? She said, well, my name is so and so. She says, no, who are you? And she put the woman to sit down in the corner until she, the woman realized what, the, what was the answer that she needed to give the, this other woman. And she said, I am the woman who is here to assist the other woman to build this company. I am here to teach. I am here to give of myself, be of service to you. And that's when the woman said, yes. Now you have told me who you are. My question to you tonight is, who are you? Have you ever thought about it? Forget about the titles. Who are you? What is your purpose? Why have you given away your power? We need to take back our power. Yeah. Yeah? Correct is right. Well, Mr. Al-Rawi, <laughs> um, having a problem getting firearms to the prison officers. I mean, first to begin with, and, and my thought on that was, as we were talking earlier to the, you know, uh, again, reform. Reformism is a major thing that needs to take place across the board, and especially within the security services of the country, where, mm -hmm. whereas you're talking uh, the army, the police, uh, 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 prison officers, and so on. Um, it, I think that they should be armed. In fact, I think that they should be uh, within the same uh, training type and realm uh, as your our police officers. Um, but, 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 but this is off-duty prison officers now who want to be armed. That is the whole crux of the matter because <clears throat> they do have firearms in yeah, prison. Well, but the thing about that is, is that the... the, the, the Prison officers are exposed to something different, in a sense, to not, well, I mean, I, I might be saying this wrong, because, the, you know, police, whether it be police, army, prison officers, they are, they are all at risk. Mm -hmm. 
but the dynamics for uh, uh, prison officers, remember, they are dealing with people who have been arrested and, and, and convicted or, and so on, and uh, they, they may be having a long term, um, whether it be 30 years, 20 years, and so on. Again, remember, I'm, I'm seeing this person for this length of time. Mm -hmm. The business that we are talking about within the prison service I mean, well, not the prison officers, but the prisoners, as far as who's drug kingpins and, and, and you know, who is just sense. doing total wrong within yeah. the prison. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How are we able to directly address that? And again, one of the contributors towards that would be the prison officers who are allowing, like, the said phones and, and, right. and drugs and, and, and weaponry and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's, it's, it's like a purge that needs to take place, yes, basically. Definitely. Um, and, and we need to revet everyone. We need to, to, to... They have to go through the entire process all over again. That's just my thought, thinking off the top of my head. But hear this. Stano Avenue, 19. It's the head office for now. We're in the process of actually changing the location of the head office um, stay tuned you'll get more details on that as time comes but on Saturday at 12 noon come down come down to the office and let us dissect certain proposals that we want to put into place put into law you know what I mean again this is the population that has to come on board to hear what we are saying, if you like it, if you don't, what you think should change, how do you think we can do certain things in forging ourselves forward. Um, because the motion has to happen now. It, it has to take place now. The citizenry, like Jana said, mm -hmm. we have to gain control now. We need That's to right. regain, the people need to regain the power they are the ones who need to say yay or nay to certain things or just about everything that government has to do. Um, because again, at the end of the day, it's, it's to bring betterment to them, the people. That's what government is there for. Bring betterment to the people. So if we've had 11 administrations passing through our, our tenure of our independence, it means to say that we should have had 11 steps up that's right. It's a greater betterment, and, and yet we've had more than 11 stepping down. The other thing, too, is um, I'm very confident that, that, that a lot of our members out there have their own thoughts and opinions on how we can go about fixing things. And the, 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 as I said earlier, I mean, this is your party. We want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear your opinion. Right? And no, no idea is ever stupid. That's right. No idea. So, you know, post it, post your thoughts on the thread so that we can go afterwards and read. Right? And somebody, you know, there, there, there is going to be a solution that is going to be found that that is going to be for the betterment of the prison officers. Another thing that um, I was very shocked and surprised to learn was that they're now going to establish a fund for the relatives of murdered prison officers. No. Come on. No going to do that. That should have been going on for years. Again, again, again. We just seem as if we are not no, finding out all, all these going things. Up, going, up, going off in their heads. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's 55 years we're doing this, folks. <laughs> we, we, we're not now getting independence like yesterday. You know, it's 55 years into it. 11 administrations. Keep that in mind. The greater part of that, the PNM were the ones who have held for reign long, for, long um, time. for for the for the, the longer period of tenure within that that time that we've had independence. And um, I'm not wanting to say that our, our problem and our society is is it's PNM powered or influence, but I would say that the greater influence to the population's mindset has been something that the PNM has put into place. That's, they're the ones who got this ball rolling. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, again, NAR came in, UNC came in. No one seems to want to take a step back and say, hey, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, our ancestors, we, they came here, whether it be uh, as slaves or laborers or what have you, they came from a far off land on the other side of the planet. We, as, as, as generations down the line, we have a land 
that yes, we've, it, you know, we've, we've gotten it from the oppressors of, of, of our ancestors. Um, it's all I know. We have, we have everything here. And, and for this Twin Isle to have poverty, homelessness, mm -hmm. people who are not able to get proper jobs, we have a ridiculous uh, 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 minimum wage. I mean, I, I wonder how people are able to even survive in the environment that we're in here in this country. And yet, I mean, I, 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 it just baffles me. And at the end of the day, again, this is my purpose and reason why I'm, 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 I'm supporting the PP because, again, I'm not in it to be friends with Philip Edward Alexander. Uh, you know, I'm not in it for personality. It's about actually seeing something that makes sense okay. and, and making it happen. Doing it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. It's not a matter of how, where, when. Listen, it's as simple. Break it down. See what's the direction of things. What's the good? What's the bad? What's the indifferent? How is it able to apply to our environment, to our population, to, to what we are dealing with here on the ground? Fine tune it. Make it happen. We, we... And not only that, if the governments were a caring government. Government, yes. You know, this is this this is something that would not be now happening. This would have happened years ago. We, and that fund we would wouldn't have been, be reading this now. Correct. We wouldn't. <clears throat> and the fund would have, would at least be a good size. Correct. After for fifty five years. That's right. So that to homes. relatives of murdered prison officers would at least get something to help the families move on. You know, so why is it now we are dealing with that? Again, our governments previously don't care. They do not care about right. the people. Yeah. That's the important thing. The PEP cares about the people. What is going to happen to them? That's right. From what I've seen thus far <laughs> for the, these eight months that I've been with PEP, or nine months is it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. I... I am absolutely impressed with this party. Um, everything is upfront, it's plain, it's simple, it's to the point. Uh, the jobs are being done. Within the PP who's not even in office, uh, seeing them help people who are flood victims, people who are homeless, people who are hungry. Uh, and, and we're not in office yet. We're not in office yet. And if you want to see or know, go to the PP page on, on Facebook. You know what I mean? And, and, and see for yourself. Look yeah. through the pictures. Check out the videos and, and, and see for yourself. And, and this is just the beginning. These are regular people that has nothing to gain. And, and is doing this from the goodness of their heart. Because truly they want betterment. And I think that we can influence 1.3 million people in order to have that same type of mindset. The same way the mindset has been created for the environment to present date, I think that we're on a, a positive road with the PEP mm -hmm. in reversing that, yeah. in bringing nonsense back to sense on yeah. this island. Yeah. You know what I mean? I agree. Um, I, I, I saw earlier we were looking at um, some controversy taking place with, with uh, that Sandals, sandals, in, in, sandals in, Antigua. in Antigua, Barbuda. Yes, the Prime Minister was talking about it in Parliament. And uh, it's so interesting because what <coughs> Sandals is doing is they want to close Sandals in Antigua for three to five months. So his comment is, so you're closing for that period of time. How, how are the people getting money? People have their mortgages, people have their cars to pay for, they have their children's school fees to pay for. You can't just close like that and not pay them their salaries. But he also claimed that it's retaliation by Sandals because um, Sandals wants more concessions. Over a 10 year period, Sandals has gotten a 30, almost 35 years of concessions because every time they go back, they started off at 10, then they went to 15, and then they went to 25 years, and now it's, they want 35 years. And the thing is, their, 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 their whole pro their profits are not being um, dealt or put back into the economy in Antigua. They are re repatriating their profits to help with expanding Sandals' brand in other countries. Now the question I have is, I hope the government who are planning the sandals in Tobago took a look at that video because this is 
the Prime Minister of Antigua talking about it in their parliament. And if they are talking about, you know, how Sanders is treating Antigua right now, then what, what, what does it mean that, it doesn't say that they are not going to treat us in the same manner when they do get their hands on, in Tobago. So we need to start looking at that and we need as a people to put our foot down and say, no, we are not going to allow Sanders to come in here and do the same thing to us. Right? Then, of course, all the complaints that they were making about the, the wages are too high. Could you believe the wages are high in Antigua? <laughs> That's one of their complaints. Wages are too high. So yeah. they are not going to want to pay the people what is this due to them. So what makes that makes you think that they are not they, that they will not have the same problem or the same complaint when they get into Tobago? So I am just hoping that the powers that be take a good, long, hard look at that video and will step back and make some considerations and take into consideration as well the fact that there are sixty thousand people in Tobago, right? But at their convention in Tobago, 50 of their members stand up and approve, yes, we want Sanders. And the PM says, I got approval from Tobago. Hmm. Now, 50 people cannot voice, be the voice, for almost 60,000. Correct. That cannot be. Correct. Right? So, you out there who's listening, go and look for that video. It's on um, the online Facebook page. Look for it, sit down, and you pay attention to what's going on because... If they come here and they come with the same issues, who's to blame? Is we to blame? And then people are going to be out of work. Because you're looking at, in Antigua, there's about almost 700 workers that are going to be out of work for the three to five months. How is, you know, that's going to be a major impact on yes. the, the, the lifestyle in, in um, Antigua. This is on, on the economy on a whole because Correct. you're talking 700 families basically is mm. going to be buying less of just about everything. So well, they have, they have no job. They're getting no money. Correct. How are they going to Correct. feed their families? Correct. You know, how are they going to, ma to, to um, pay their bills? Especially if these are families who are living paycheck to paycheck. Correct. What is their situation? You know what I mean? Um, are any leaders sitting down and looking at the human element of, of, of the nations that they govern or, or, or lead. You know what I mean? That's, that's the question. Uh, you know, we look at the world and we see it going to mayhem. We, it's, it's, it's just going totally crazy. And I, I keep saying Trinidad, 1.3 million people is not enough people for us to say that we can have the problems that we have as a nation here. We just don't have enough people to really have the type of problems that we have. So how the heck do we do have them? You know what I mean? And again, it's because it's systematically done. It's purposely done. You know, there's, there's, there's different motives and underlying uh, 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 reasonings for why things are the way they are in this nation. You know, uh, because I, I've, I've spoken to children and, and they can see greater sense <laughs> in moving the nation forward versus grown men and women. I, I don't understand. I just don't understand. And, yes. and, you know, we emphasize the call to the population. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Tell have your the discussion yes. with things you, you approve of from versus things that you don't. What makes sense? What doesn't? Mm -hmm. The point of the matter is, is that the PP is here for the people, genuinely. And, and the platform is here for you to make it happen. You know, uh, because it's again, it's not for us. It's it's we no, nobody within the PP is trying to, to be corrupt or, or being a be in a position to steal money. Because guess what? Again, one of the first laws that we plan to, to, to put into place getting into office is, is recall. We will yes. be the PP will be the first party being exposed to that law once it comes to pass. Which means the population at any point can fire any MP or any public servant. I mean, well, uh, uh, who's in charge of a, a particular arm or department or so on? Um, <coughs> excuse me, but again, uh, we, the PP, would be the ones uh, exposed to that. So, mm -hmm. again, we are not putting ourselves in a position where we just want to run away with the damn uh, 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 central bank. No. Now, um, talking about that um, referendum. Today, I had to drive over that hill from Digo Martin into Maribel. Mm. 
there were at least five leaks. Isn't that water? No, I wasn't going to say it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so no, I decided. <laughs> yes. Yes. Unfortunately, it is Colin Embers' yes. area. Um, and there were at least five leaks. I mean, water was just pouring out of the mains. There was one that was even flaring up into the air. So my car got a bath this morning. And uh, there was another one that the water was just, it, it was all in the road. And I had to take pictures of some of them and send to, um, there's, a, there's a, a, a chap that I um, send my pictures to and he normally will set, organize to prioritize and get the water trucks out of these areas. And not only that, but there was also an area where there was a lot of debris that came, up, came close to the road. And uh, there's a lot of rubbish as well. And I'm thinking, I said, hmm, what's going to happen when we, next our, when we get our next heavy rains? All of that stuff is going to be in the road. So my question is, where is the representative? Why is he not traveling the roads in his constituency? taking notes of what needs to be fixed, what, what needs his attention, and getting it fixed. We are talking about Hwasa has no money. People in Diamond Vale not getting water for three and four weeks. But here it is. You have tons of water pouring down this hill, right, and not being attended to. What is going on? And, you know, and then you, you think to yourself, well, Again, I pay my taxes. Why am I not getting service? That's right. We're just Something giving away has to money. Be done. <laughs> we're giving away money as, as a population where taxes are concerned because we're not getting anything for, for the taxes. All we're doing is, is, is what? Greasing their pockets, being able to give financiers and, and, and uh, uh, you know, whomever else, mm -hmm. friends, family, and, and, and so on all this money from the taxpayer and we are not getting anything to mm -hmm. bring betterment to us. And not only that, let's go back to Lake Asphalt. <coughs> there was Excuse a leak me. on my street and uh, they just put dirt and of course with the dirt, the, 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 uh, the weight of the garbage truck eventually broke the line again. The line broke three times and the fourth time they fixed it, they still did not put repave and I have been sending messages to the same gentleman and saying, please, oh God, just bring some pitch and pitch the road and fix the road because the road is getting holes and again the line is going to break so again we are going to be without water driving down on the high cookery highway to come into town two massive holes hmm. two and i'm saying this is going to cause an accident because somebody is going to swerve to avoid dropping because you're going to be dropping in the hole. Yeah. Right? That's damage to our cars. Who is paying that bill? Why can't we get the roads fixed, the potholes fixed? Two pitch lakes in the world. Trinidad has the better one of the two. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> You know, so why can't we get it fixed? Again, you have the Minister of Works. If he's not doing his job, we should be able to say, boss, here what? Thanks, but it's time for you to proceed. Yes, We yes. wish you well in your future yes. lives. Yeah, yeah. And get somebody in <laughs> who is going to get out there and see what needs to be done and get it done. Now, Wasa will tell you why they couldn't fix the road is because they didn't have the money to buy the pit. Mm -hmm. Okay? No, we own a pitch lake, but you don't, we don't have money to buy the pitch. That's something wrong. Something is wrong. Something it's a lot's wrong. wrong. A lot's wrong. A lot's wrong. Okay? So, again, please, you have the power. We will complain, we will bitch, we will bad talk, hey, we will hey, chirp. Janet, we can say that? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we could, it's Thursday, you know. I think I uh, live a thing on Thursday where you know um, we can speak French. We oui, oui. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. We'll be good. We'll be but good. But we, we, we will complain and complain and complain. But when the time comes to do something about it, we don't. And then what happens? The problems get worse. Yeah. 
right? A hundred year old bridge finally collapses. And when it collapsed, it ruptured the Wasa line to the, the, the area. So now the, um, the, the people in the village area, they cannot, uh, they're stranded and they can't get water. They have been complaining, they have been begging for the government or whoever responsibility it is to get the bridge fixed or replaced. It's over 100 years old, right? Nothing has been done. So what? They are now stranded. Why can't we not get things done? The next topic I want to talk about is at least 10 families were left homeless when a fire destroyed 10 homes in sea lots. Now, let's talk about housing. Uh, <laughs> housing. Put that out, stick, as a Philip would say, stick, stick up, up in, in an hour, hour. Yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. There's a big war that was bre well, is brewing between the housing minister and predecessor, Mr. Munilal, over the Victoria Keys housing project where there's debate as to whether a certain minister got a rent-to-own contract for one of the apartments. Now, again, I was floored because these apartments are supposed to be built for the lower-income families. Mm -hmm. More money was put out to make them luxury apartments, which I don't understand, with swimming pool and tennis courts and these kinds of things. And then you're being told, well, oh, government has kept 10 of these units for them for their use. Question, who paying for the maintenance? Who paying for the utilities that's going to be used in those units that is being used by government or uh, has been retained for What government? are the actual uses? What? Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey. <laughs> right? Um, Taxpayers pay for that too. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, here it is you have um, Sea Lots residents, no homes, and here it is you have a war going on about a building facility that was originally for the lower income. Yeah, but there, there are Some, homes there are homes around Trinidad and Tobago um, that are incomplete and not occupied. And my question is, has anyone done a census as to exactly how many homes that are in that particular condition that can possibly be available at a much shorter space in time? Because obviously you don't have to actually build the entire home. It's just a matter of completing the thing. Um, we are able to address a very small portion of the population in, in, in housing, housing them, housing mm -hmm. families, and yet... Okay. It's, it's not on the front burner. People has to go again and, and beg and see who they can link up with under the table and pass whatever. And, I mean, look, man, we, we are better than this Trinidad and Tobago. We are so much better than this. And I, I know we are because everyone I've met who are Trinidadian outside of this shore of Trinidad and Tobago, I keep <coughs> saying, is always at the top of their class, no matter what field they're in no matter what field they're in. And it just shows that we are a great people. We just need to have the proper environment in order to, to, to really have that scene. Yeah. That's all it is. Really. Now, the other thing too is, there, are, there is government housing at the Federation Villas and Flagstaff. Now, the reason you're telling the population that you are using these um, housing units at Victoria Keys is because those apartments in Federation and Flagstaff are in need of repair. So, all of a sudden, they need a repair, so that's why you're putting them in Victoria Keys? Well, look, you know, it's a $2.5 million property. Hold on. What was more important to repair was a stadium for $90 million that we probably <laughs> use once. <laughs> since it's repaired, all right? Again, we have many, many housing developments. Is it by uh, uh, HDC, is what they call yeah, it? Yeah, it's HDC. They, they, they're the ones heading that. Mm -hmm. That are derelict, empty, un, not finished. It's incomplete. 
Yes. You know what I mean? And, and yet we are able to find $90 million to, to fix a stadium and, and have people run up and down a field behind a ball and, and, and that type of thing once a, a month or, or, or what is it? Uh, is that bringing back enough income to cover that $90 million cost? What really was the purpose of even doing that to begin with? Is that, is that not something that could have actually put on the back burner? Yes, the structure is already there, but did we really have to spend $90 million? In, in, in within this term of, of office for the PNM, uh, uh, for what? What is the real reason? What's the real purpose? I mean, it makes no sense. And again, you have empty homes, a large portion of our, 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 our population <coughs> who are less fortunate, not living in galvanized structures. I mean, really, Trinidad and Tobago, really, we give Clico how much? Is is twenty five billion dollars? Mm -hmm. Bail out, bail out, man! Just bail them out, twenty five billion. But yet we want to tell the population, ban your belly, right? Raise gas, raise diesel, raise everything, raise everything, and and like him but say, he raised it how many times, and the people have not rioted. The people have not made a note. Correct. We like it Correct. so. Yeah. I am telling you, Trinidad and Tobago, we cannot like it so. We cannot. We cannot. We can't go down this road anymore. I sit, I look at my, my, my children. I'm in fear. I am in fear. Total fear. Because I have no idea. What is the environment that these children are going to be left in? Mm -hmm. What is the environment? Look at what's happening in school. School is going crazy right now. Security guards are, are, are in fear of the students. Teachers, principals. I mean... Be, let's let's be real, Trinidad and Tobago. Your children are going to these schools too. I have a couple of friends. His 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 son was bullied and almost thrown off of a second floor building in a in um. I don't even want to call the name of the school right now, but stick a pin in that Trinidad and Tobago. We'll get more information and we would shine it up. We would put it out here. We will put it out here because at the end of the day, we, we as a people, we have to bring betterment to ourselves. We can't sit and wait. I sat and look at my grand, great-grandmother, sit down and wait. Great-grandfather, grandmother, father, mother, everybody, sit down and wait. Waiting for change. And have they got it? No. 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 no they and saw our the women and children are in crisis. Yeah, because every day you it. open the newspapers, the latest one is a pharmacist who raped, who's been raping customers. Madness. Right? You know, you have a, someone who um, rapes, raped a young girl and was out on bail. Where are we going? But, but look at the case. Uh, I remember Philip was talking about this some time back. It was, I think it was a police officer that had raped mm -hmm. someone in a, pol uh, a young police lady, station. In a police right. station and it's 20 some odd years. Yeah, yeah. 20 some odd years come and gone. And this could not be addressed. And you had all the evidence. You had everything there. I mean, mm -hmm. our system is that broken? Really? Our yeah. system is that broken? So as citizenry, when you sit and you look at the police cars passing up and down to protect and serve, to protect and serve who? <laughs> to protect and serve who? Right. We are the citizens who are in need of help. Protection. We are the citizens who need protection. What is happening? What is going on in Trinidad and Tobago? I mean, really and truly, I live abroad. How many donkey years come back here? For what? I, 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 I was cringing being abroad, being a second class citizen in another man's land. I come home and I was a first class citizen and even greater fear. Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's take a pin in Alpha. Yeah, I know. Another, another <laughs> issue that I want to talk about. Noise pollution in residential areas. Mm. You see that? That is like mass and town. Not only mass and town, but it's it is a, a, a can of worms yeah. that like nobody wants to properly address. We know Woodbrook, um, Arapita Avenue, the mm -hmm. residents around there they suffer every night because you, if you don't have somebody um, urinating on your wall, they put in a train of garbage uh, in front of your house. The noise is too loud, and okay. so you have and oh, hold on, and you also have a lot of pensioners that live in that area. Mm -hmm. Carnival time, oh my goodness! Some people have to actually leave their homes and go somewhere else in two days because the noise is so tremendous. 
on my street the other night, there is a particular resident. Um, he rents out the property for weddings and parties. And uh, there is no control over the level of uh, the, 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 no, uh, the noise level. And the, the residents are complaining. So the question is, who do we turn to? Who? The EMA, you go to the EMA, nothing happening. You call the police, nothing happening. You call the fire services, nothing happening. Who do we turn to? Unless somebody goes in there and pulls out the plug, which will cause back an hour. But, but not only that, a lot of people are, are, are abandoning it. Uh, uh, they're selling their homes. Correct. You know, and, and why, why? Why should they have to sell their exactly. homes? Exactly. And we're talking how much generations. I know a family right in, on our Peter Avenue, just off our Peter Avenue, that they've had a home in the family for over 100 years and... They had to walk away because they could not deal with it. Their elderly nice. grandmother and, mm -hmm. and, and so on. And they, then they and then the minister of finance talked about having a party street. A party street. I, I heard a party uh, street. I know is um well, I've been our Peter. I, I heard about that. With the, um, well, I would hope that he's man. he's not trying to create our Peter Avenue as a party street because at the end of the day, again with forward thinking, mm -hmm. I mean, earmark an area that you can create that environment, no man. I mean, really, exactly. really, 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 really. You were elected into office that, you know, we assume that you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, word of advice. Find yourself. <laughs> Find yourself. Find yourself. Find yourself. Find yourself, right. Well, I mean, yeah, aside from finding yourself and you still choose not to find yourself, if you're in office, just do the job right now, man. I mean... <laughs> Earmark an area within, if it's the Port of Spain area, you want to have this party street? A proper commercial area. No homes around. That's right. You know, People have, are suffering. This is it. This is it. And especially when you have young children trying to sleep. Not as only well. that, elderly. Elderly as well. Look, my little backside, excuse me French again. <laughs> um, you know, mother's milk on my face. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> how much of noise do you think the elderly could take? They, they need as much rest as they can possibly get. I'm not saying that we want to, to close down party or you know, close down uh, 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 entertainment. That's not what we're saying. We're saying to designate a proper area within the city limits. If it's Port of Spain, you want to insist on having this entertainment area or this party street. Airmark a, a proper area that is 110% commercial. Where you have no problems, where EMA is concerned, no one is, is being affected uh, within any type of residence whatsoever and so on. I mean, it's, it's not a hard task. And if you can't earmark an area within the city limits that, you know, you can create that type of environment, well then now, find an area that is within the limits of a commercialized area and, and, and create it there. You know what I mean? Uh, but the thing is, is just be proactive. Think. Look. Converse with the population. Don't just make decisions. You know, this is why we are where we are today because everybody making the decisions, trying to shove it down everybody's throat and, yeah. you know, we're just supposed to be okay. That's you know right. what I mean? Yeah. It's just not fair. Definitely not fair. And we really need to deal with those issues because nobody else is dealing for the last 55 years. No one is dealing with it. Correct. The family mm -hmm. case with the, the 10 homes and the families. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the 10 homes that was burned down with those families. I mean, is there any word whatsoever as to what's going to happen where these uh, families well, are concerned? I, well, I believe that um, the, the H, um, HGC is going to have to step in and provide homes to these people because one chap said all his belongings were lost. All he had on was the pair of short pants he had on his body. Hmm. Right? So they would have had to provide clothing for them as well as, for, well, I, um, I think also children were affected in that um, fire. So they would have had to replace school books and uniforms and, you know, try to help them as best as they can. Just remind me to put a footnote on that. I mm -hmm. want to touch back on that next week's show. Mm -hmm. Simply to know what has happened within a week period, seven days, from yeah. this Thursday to next Thursday, as to what was done for these families. Um, you know, how, how much are we going to... Or, or how much is the system going to drag its feet? Um, I'm just curious to know that. So uh, look out for a, a 
small part too towards that um, that issue uh, with the uh, ten families losing their homes and sea lots. Uh, we're going to revisit that next uh, Thursday. Um, again, just basically to see what the system has put in place for these families. Um, let's just see how efficient or inefficient uh, the system is presently. Because I mean, you know, people are talking on the ground, and I, I know they're hearing the government of the day is hearing what is happening on the ground, what people are seeing, what's the the topic of discussion what's in the public space and they know yes. that the population right now is not too happy with their administration at all they're right. not happy at all umc feel to themselves they have a fighting chance eh, that's all i'm gonna say is eh, because you know what like uh like philip says um what is it is it the same face of a different coin or is it a different coin same face or something along those lines i'm not sure something along those lines, something along those lines. but anyway <laughs> Um, what else do we want to touch on real quick? Yeah, one last thing is, I, I'm not sure whether you are aware, but <clears throat> there's something called judicial review. I was looking, uh, another issue that popped up is um, where a 24-year-old university student was given the green light to sue a magistrate whom she accused of being biased against her lawyer during her, t her trial for assaulting her relative last month. A high court judge granted leave to, to the young lady to pursue her judicial review against the magistrate. Did you know you can do a judicial review against whether it's a magistrate, whether it's against the minister, whether it's against the CIO, the chief immigration officer, or any public officer? Did you know that? Well, you can because there is this review that looks at how they are doing their jobs, whether they are making the right decisions, whether their, their decisions are biased. And we need to be a little more proactive in, uh, if we have a situation like that, to getting it, your matter to judicial review. Because at the end of the day, you have rights. And you need to exercise it as best as you can. You know of any situations like that? Hmm. Judicial review? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I, 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 I do know of, but not wanting to mention because I'm not having the proper information right. in front of me. Um, okay. But again, reform, 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 like Philip says, reboot the republic. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Reboot the republic. Let's start from scratch. Let's go back to the Constitution. Let's make that real. Let's look at something as simple as, as, as our national anthem. That says a lot, you know. I, I mean, tears almost come to my eyes when I hear it. And you listen to the words in detail. Mm -hmm. In detail. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's, it's a powerful, powerful uh, piece of script. Take my word on this. And um, it says a lot. It says who we are. It says where we need to be. You know, as a nation, as a nation. But again, PP is here. We'll make it happen. Oh, yes. Now, one last thing, too, is, um, again, latest news. Um, the collapse of the King Peter's Ray Road in Moriah and Tobago. The mm. people had to actually go to Channel 5 to get them to come and see the road and to make a report on it because it's collapsing. And up to now, nothing is being done for the residents in the area. When is the government going to move in and do something? When the road actually collapses and it's impassable, you can't get from point A to point B? No, well, for sure, that's when you're going to see them. I mean, you, you know, know they, there's no way, no reason to be proactive to say, all right, quarter of the road is being uh, uh, <laughs> damaged. Let's try to fix it now. No, let the whole damn thing mash up, man. You know, no cars could pass. Then they would say, hey, Let's go fix this. And then what happens when they do come to fix it? They still can't, can't use the road. Because I believe that part of the retaining wall has collapsed. No, not only so that. They have to rebuild. Not only that. They have to choose the middle of the day, rush oh, hour, yeah. to say, hey, let's fix the road at that particular point in time. <coughs> Excuse me. It's absolutely amazing. I, you, you, it makes you kind of wonder it's, who makes the decision. It's a comedy show <laughs> in Trinidad and Tobago. Put on the Parliament Channel. It's a total... No, no, I love the Parliament Channel. 
I love the fact that we as citizens can sit down and watch our um, MPs in Parliament and some of them give you information. That is the importance of watching Parliament, you know. Of course. Right? No, but that is but the importance of watching Parliament. <laughs> but do we actually get that when we're watching Parliament channel? Yes, you do. No, what I'm saying is, is that, you know, it's, it's almost a show when you're looking yes. at them on the Parliament channel. <coughs> you know but that you mean? have to pick sense of the nonsense. Of the nonsense. <laughs> true, true, it's true. like when someone mentioned that um, a minister got um you know a quarter of a million dollars in a, uh, uh to, to have an operation and uh, that children are dying you know that's the information you want to be able to get because right. then it makes you it opens your mind for you to realize well my goodness if it is being brought up in the parliament then you know we need to start looking at what our government is doing about it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what are we doing and then of course the part of the, the channel also gives you history history lessons, what went on in Trinidad years ago, how things were done. There's a one that talks about parliamentary oversight and what we as citizens should be looking for in our MPs and what they should be doing and what they should not be doing. Let me tell you, trust me, let that channel be your morning show channel. You will learn a lot. It will open your eyes. It will add to the information that Philip gives you on a daily basis. Question to you. Um, the Parliament channel is, is powered by Parliament. Uh, by Parliament. Yes. And yes. that would be the government in office at the time would be basically the, the um, custodians no, of that. No, no, it's the Parliament. The Parliament. The, 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 the Parliament the body. Yes. Okay, all right. Whoever all right. runs the Parliament, right. they are responsible for that. Right. And to, if you want to see um, pass, um, um, I wouldn't call it a show, but a session, you can go onto their YouTube channel and pull, you know, take a look and see what transpired either this week or last week. Mm. When a lot, of, I'm quite sure a lot of people did not get an opportunity to even see the budget or to see what they did, the response from the, the senators to the budget. Go onto the YouTube Parliament channel and look at it. Because it's one thing to be told something, but when you're hearing it from the horse's mouth, you know, you have to sit back and say, well, you know, something got to, something got to give. True, true. Right? And also look at the responses of the senators. And also look at um, when that same over, oversight um, video, that tells you exactly what you supposed to be looking for in your MP. If the MP is not doing their job, then you know what you have to do in the next elections. TNT, my goodness. Yeah. Janice, it was a total pleasure being with you hosting the show tonight, <laughs> I must say. Uh, I know last week they had mentioned they wanted to do an all-male cast tonight. Um, that will come it's to okay. be continued, so stay tuned. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, I'm fighting a small cold, so, you know, please excuse me, Trinidad and Tobago, and the wider world, Peppers. <laughs> um, aside from that, though, uh, next week also, uh, do keep your ears on, onto the grapevine. Uh, we are planning a competition uh, mm -hmm. for our end-of-year event, which is uh, Pep and Parang, is that how we call it? Pep Parang Christmas. Pep, Pep Pep. Parang Christmas. That's like a Peter Pepper. Yes. Peter Pepper. <laughs> that kind of thing. But anyway, uh, check out the Facebook page and so on. Um, also, as usual, Philip will give you uh, the 411 on that. Uh, that's information, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, check the Facebook page. Yeah, check the Facebook page. Be in the know. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, again. And it's only $200 to come and, and, and meet the executive and meet members and good food well hopefully hopefully <laughs> should be good food don't say hopefully should be good food okay. yes yes good food. um but come and interact network come and have conversations let your voices be heard 
Come and give your opinions. Let us have discussion because that's the only way we're going to be move. If we if we are going to be able to move forward. Yeah, because we need to know how to move forward. Correct. We need to know how you are thinking and what your needs are. That is right. If you right. don't tell us, that we won't right. know. Because we're not planning to go into parliament and argue with anyone, you know, and we're not going to shove anything down your throat. You have to approve it first. If it's not approved by the people, we're not flying with it. But anyway, time is up. Again, Trinidad and Tobago, thank you so much on behalf of myself, Anthony Defu, and Janice Leamon Dekwiki. Oh, I love it. He just keeps <laughs> renaming me I'm, all the time. No, but I'm getting it. I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. It's a really exquisite name. And, uh, you know, it, it, you can bite your tongue with it. But uh, but definitely, I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm getting there, though. Um, so, again, look out for us next Thursday. Um, as well as check out the Facebook page, you're going to get some, some information as to what we have lined up for next Thursday as well. Yes. So TNT, have a good night. Good night.